guys, Phil at Katati Speed Shop. Our good friends at Flowmaster provided us with a set of Super 44 mufflers for our Camaro project that we have going on here. It's a three chambered muffler that they provided to us that has the internals in it. The end caps were left off. I've shortened the muffler up. Uh, we've basically stuffed the end caps into them and we'll be welding up the seams on both ends of the mufflers and the main seam down the middle of the muffler. Uh, we have a nice set of SPD flanges. We actually shortened up the inlet to condense everything as much as we possibly can so that we can get it up into the car. Here we are at the next step in the process and, and my man Dan here is going to be welding the, uh, the muffler up that uh, Phil just described. But let, what we wanted to do now is talk a little bit more about the material that we're using that Flowmaster has elected to use for these mufflers and the process of which we're going to use. Um, Flowmaster uses 409 stainless steel for, the, for their exhaust systems. Um, one other alternate could have been a uh, 300 series or Austinetic uh, stainless steel. The 400 series is a Furetic stainless steel. The big difference between the two is that in the 400 series, the chromium content tends to be a little bit lower and realistically it's a little more cost effective. Um, and even in production cars, most recently, they've started to shift over more toward the 400 series just to help for corrosion resistance. So you still get that in this process. Um, the filler metal that Dan's going to be using is a 300. It's actually going to be a 309 stainless steel. And anytime you're welding a ferritic, that 400 series, you want to equal or exceed the chromium content of the filler metal you're using. And the 300 series is a pretty common filler metal you can find at any of your, your local welding distributors. And the 309 that, uh, that uh, Dan's going to be using is about twice the chromium content of what's in here right now. Uh, we've also elected to, to tack in several different places and Dan's going to add more tacks before he actually welds it up here with the two end caps. With thinner gauge stainless steel and the fact that stainless doesn't really dilute or uh, transfer heat all that well, you want to uh, make sure that you've got enough tax points to minimize the warpage as you're, as you're going through it. So I'm going to turn it over to my man Dan and we'll see what kind of magic he does when, he, when we're done. <laughs> I like to spot weld every inch or so. So once it's all spot welded, I come back and I'll stitch one inch, skip one, stitch another inch and skip one and so on. That keeps the um, heat at a minimum from warping the, the material or the project we're working on. And then I'll go back and fill in the ones I didn't weld and continue that pr process until the entire muffler is welded up. Also, after each tack or each weld, I like to leave my torch on there to get some post flow because if you pull away fast, too fast, the sudden, um, the sudden amount of time it takes for the weld to cool off, it'll be too rapid and it'll crack the, the tack. So if you leave the post flow, it helps it from cracking. The majority of the stainless work that's been done on this car has been done with the Diversion 180. Um, some may think that a project like this would, would take a, a more advanced machine, a more expensive machine, but one of the key points that uh, we wanted to, to show you about the Diversion 180 is how simple it is to use. And in particular with stainless, if you take a look on the front panel, you can select stainless as an option. So you don't even necessarily need to know the, the polarity for a project like this. And then as far as selecting the right amperage and, and you know, with thinner tubing like this, that's going to be key. It's also got an easy to set chart where it'll let you dial in the, the correct amperage for the application. You'll also notice too that the team here has modified um, the, the overall package a little bit because the Diversion 180 is, a, uh, is compatible with the wireless foot control, which the team has done. And for a project like this, moving all around a car or, or in some of the other fixtures they've got here, it's made that a lot easier.